what are the steps that you would say if we wanted to follow? Because I saw about your, you um, having your dream, having a space that you go in and you create every day for like 20 minutes. I re- I've read like three of your books. But if you were to encapsulate all this, how could we put the law of attraction into effect with seg- going through segments and everything throughout the day as a complete sort of routine that we could manifest faster? Well, first we would start with this statement to ourselves: The law of attraction is in effect. I am not putting it into effect and I'm not working the law of attraction. Actually, the law of attraction is responding to me. So in order to receive beneficial response from the law of attraction, I've got to be offering beneficial vibrations. And how do I know that I'm offering a beneficial to myself, my self-interest vibration? It feels good when I offer it. It's either fun or interesting or fascinating or exciting or loving or appreciative it feels really good so when I am feeling good now I'm entering the energy field of attraction and I'm entering it with deliberately activated marbles that will attract to me things that will please me as they manifest And it is a sure thing that they will manifest. And it's a sure thing that they will please me as they manifest. They might surprise me while they're delighting me. Because it might be a bigger, more accurate, more all-inclusive creation than I even knew that I had set into motion. My capacity to allow is what's growing. My capacity to allow myself the blessings and creations that I've asked for. That's the stance that we would take. If we were you sitting in these chairs, having heard what you heard today, having received the vibrational movement that you've received, that's what we'd leave this room reminding ourselves. The law of attraction is on all the time. And I enter the field where it is, just like I enter the gravity field where it is. And the law of attraction responds to me in perfection every time. And it reflects back to me. It brings more to me, just like what I've got active. So if I'm running around ornery, I'm getting ornerier. Most people have a kind of mixed bag, so to speak. You're happy, you're sad, you're worried, you're not. You're all over the place. You are conditional creators. You're conditional lovers because you wait for the condition. And we said it at the very beginning today, most people offer most of their vibration in response to what they are observing. So you wanna be better selective sifters. Like if you turn on the news, And you feel like you should because you want to be a responsible citizen. You want to know what's going on. So you turn it on because you want to be informed, whatever. And it feels terrible to you. That means that your inner being isn't telling you to turn it off. It means that your inner being is seeing what you're seeing from a different vantage point. Now let's carry this out because this is the answer to your question. What is it that would be of greatest advantage for people to know as a result of this conversation? Your inner being is not already deciding for you what you should do. Your inner being is in alignment with what you have already decided that you want. So the purest form of your decisions are what your inner being is holding. And everyone has an inner being. And so it's true for everyone. And the law of attraction is sorting this out. Most people are not offering their vibrations on purpose. They are offering them in response to what they are observing. So these are the things that we would do if we were standing in your physical shoes. We would observe because you can't help it. There's stuff around and you like to observe, you like to see, you like to know, you like to learn, you like to be part of things. So you're going to observe. We would get out ahead of it by deciding as we walk into a segment I'm going to look for what I want to see today no matter where I'm going no matter what I'm doing no matter who I'm doing it with it's my dominant intent to look for what feels good when I feast my eyes upon it because that means my inner being and I are on the same vibrational wavelengths that means that what my inner being has gathered on my behalf I have access to So here's the sentence that you're asking for. 
you were non-physical energy before you came into this body and even as consciousness entered your body the larger part of who you were remained non-physically focused you refer that often to soul we call it source we call it your inner being but that part of you exists at the same time so here you are walking around in your physical realm having exposure to life and having opinions that's the most accurate word that Esther can find so you see something and you have an opinion about it this is what we really want you to hear at the same moment that you're having an opinion your inner being is too you're feeling fearful we appreciate your story so much you with the fence and the neighbor <laughs> you're feeling what you describe as fear because of your concern about what your neighbor might crazily do your inner being is not doing that your inner being only knows the positive aspects of your neighbor your inner being only knows what your neighbor has put into their vortex so your inner being will never negatively attract on your behalf ever so your inner being has an opinion that's based on love and a lot of experience and a lot of vetting of a lot of lifetimes and a lot of exposure to a lot of experiences where you've just come to know your own power and you've come into alignment with who you really are and then there's you in your human form not learning as our friend was talking about earlier not because you need to learn that but because that's just the way that it is when you look at something and you shout no at it this is a universe that's based upon attraction on inclusion there's no such thing as no so when you shout no at something you're actually shouting yes at something you don't want you're actually calling to you what you don't want but guess what your inner being is never doing that so the big stuff is never gonna happen like that oh you can mess up your life and you can have a miserable time but you're not gonna destroy the world with things like that this world is not under threat or at risk the well-being is dominant all that's happening that you would call negative or unwanted all that it is is a human or a whole lot of humans because beasts don't do it hardly some of them when they're domesticated they begin to act a little more like you but mostly they're <laughs> pure positive energy and so when you push against something and your inner being doesn't you feel that tug of war you feel it in yourself and so what's gone wrong if you want to say something's gone wrong you've used this thing that you have observed that you've concluded that you don't want and that's fine because when you know what you don't want you know what you do want when you know what you don't want your inner being really knows what you do want and your inner being will never join you in what you don't want after you've defined what you do want and so your opinion that makes you feel bad is because your inner being is looking at exactly the same situation from its point of view of love now we want to carry that a little further think about this everyone you know oh everyone who has been in physical form that you've known you're dearly not so departed they've re-emerged into non-physical and in their transition they have left behind all doubt and fear and worry because in that transition they've joined their inner beings and they're resistant free and they're pushing against nothing and they know you it's not that they remember you because relationships are eternal so they're focused with you right here and right now your inner beings and all those dearly not so departed when you choose to really focus on what you don't want and you decide to beat the drum of that to join the protest rather than the advocates to push hard against something rather than identify what it means that you want and then think about that you separation is too strong a word but you pinch yourself off from all of that those emotions feel like loneliness they feel like fear they feel like absence they feel like unwanted because you're holding yourself apart from everything that you really are and everything that you really want you see not one other person on the planet has to know this and behave anything like what we are encouraging here for you to live happily ever after because you have the capacity within yourself 
to do such a good job of selectively sifting or such a good job of giving others the benefit of the doubt do you know when you give someone the benefit of the doubt you're the one who receives the first benefit you're the one that receives the first win because you align with who you are and you have all of this clarity that's where the ideas come from that's where the creative ideas come from that's where the solutions come from that's where the problems are solved and it happens generationally after a while the old dead ornery ones peter out they die and they don't keep active all that stuff that they've worried about but there's monuments all over the planet that they've encouraged you to go look at and so in time the old complaints and we don't want to use the word memory because it's not about memory it's the old activation is just not active in the generations once enough generations have passed but you don't have to wait for generations to pass you heard enough here today that if you could walk out of this room with these things on your mind I'm gonna care about how I feel and when I don't feel good I'm gonna know that I'm attracting something that I don't want and I'm gonna know that my inner being isn't in on this so it won't be a really monumental attraction we want to say to you when you hook up with your inner being one who's connected like that is more powerful than millions who are not but most of the world is running around with puny paltry attraction and then just bickering with each other over the spoils of what they are disallowing each other what they're disallowing of themselves and blaming on each other we do want to offer you one maybe new to you easier way of understanding why what's coming to you comes it's about your point of attraction which the law of attraction never deviates from in other words the law of attraction never causes you to be a cooperative component with something that you are not already a vibrational match to you have complete vibrational say over that maybe you're not conscious and good at it yet maybe you're creating by default maybe when you were little your parents were alcoholics and fought with each other all the time and you've still got some of that in your thought process we've been describing it this way it's like you're walking around with a potential of activated thoughts as we were chewing with Esther one afternoon about some things the thought that came into her mind as we were sending our explanation to her was it's like I have Esther is saying a bag of marbles that bag of marbles represents my point of attraction and we said to her not the whole bag let's say the whole bag has a marble in it for every thought you've ever thought but it's only the marbles that are active right now the activated marble not the dominant ones because you could have had a lot of experience on a topic and you could have a lot of marbles in your bag about that it's the active vibrationally active marble that equals what you're attracting from where you stand here and now so if you sort of kind of get that every now and again Esther will be focusing on something she picked up her dry cleaning the other day 12 pieces count the hangers one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one twelve thank you very much and when she got them home the next morning and was taking the wrapping off of it there was a hanger with a piece of tissue paper on it but no piece of clothing marble in the bag what what how can that be that seems like trickery to me <laughs> the lady said let's count the hangers Esther said okay the lady didn't say let's make sure there's something on the hangers <laughs> so if Esther has anything else in her bag of marbles oh yeah I remember back when we were running around the country in the bus and sometimes when we'd count the hangers one was missing and they'd say come tomorrow we'll see if we can find it and they would say we're leaving tonight can you find it now no nope, we'll ship it to you so Esther started making a list of every piece of clothing it looks like this and this is the label 
If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next